Sorry, we're closed. All right, welcome back. Episode 89 of Sorry We're Close. Let's talk about Key West here for a second, folks. I know you guys know I had I went on a weekend trip out to uh, Key West this weekend. And I, it's like a southern, a more southern, or I'd say tropical Nashville. It's all live music, which I, I didn't expect for whatever reason. Um, I went to a place called Irish Kevin's. I'm trying to think of other places I went to. So Dante, so you guys have, the people that have been there can kind of relate here a little bit. Um, Irish Kevin's, I think I had the most fun at. A place called Rick's had a really nice upstairs, like it was outside. That was cool. But Irish Kevin's, I think I had the most fun at. Um, I love the live music vibe. I love all that stuff. The sing-alongs, just just a really cool vibe. So uh, Key West will definitely be back on my list. Uh, I, it's tremendous. Went snorkeling as well and forgot sunscreen so i'm a little red if you're watching the youtube you see some of the red i didn't get too bad uh, but i did uh, get a little red uh, for those of you that have been listening since last august you remember the absolute shit show of me getting like burnt to a crisp towards the end of august last year uh so that was fun but key was good time whatever the big news right now and this is what i'm, I'm here to talk about today is in the world of baseball yet again um Tony La Russa, the clash between the old school and the new school of baseball. Now, I recently talked about on my uh, a podcast a few weeks ago that I'm on board now with the new school of baseball, the new age, the, the pimping home runs, all of those things, having a good time. Do I still think there should be a respect level? Yeah. Like in the game of soccer, for example, you don't see uh, – you don't really see them celebrate – if they're up eight nothing, that's not something that yeah they they get down oh, nice but it's not like a huge celebration right, it's it's similar you know we still should show a little bit of respect to our opponents and in my opinion, um, but if you didn't see it and if you haven't been living under a rock for the last I don't know how many days now, a guy by the name of Yerman Mercedes I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right but Yerman Mercedes. Um, the, they were, the White Sox were beaten up on a division rival in the Minnesota Twins. They brought in, uh, I think they brought in Tortuga. Um, they brought him in to, to finish up the, the, the inning. It was, a, you know, the game really. It was an absolute shit show. And he ends up going 3-0 on this guy, Yerman Mercedes. <clears throat> he then goes, Mercedes then goes and swings on 3-0, hits an absolute nuke, you know, whatever, right? <clears throat> Some people in the old school of baseball don't like that. So the the old thought process is that you know you're up by a lot of runs. You know you don't swing three zero. I actually think that um, if I'm not mistaken, Tatis Jr. had something similar happen last year where he swung three zero when he was they were beating up on the Rangers like twenty to nothing or something like that, and they hit a home run. There was some th- thought process here, and even at that time, I was kind of. I was kind of iffy on it. I understand that thought process, but one the the reason me being iffy on it actually allowed me to kind of come into the new age a little bit more here about this particular topic because people brought out brought out some really good points when talking about this. And the the, the point that I see the most is this is major league baseball. This isn't T-ball, this isn't this isn't the minor leagues even, this isn't college ball, this isn't, you know, high school baseball. This is Major League Baseball. You don't get free passes in the in in Major League Baseball. This is as as big as it gets. This is the cream of the crop talent. Every at bat counts. They talk about that all through the minor leagues, all through the big leagues. Every pitch, every at bat counts. The fact that you swing 3-0 here, to me, I used to be like, well, you let it slide. But I, I don't like that anymore. I, I, I went up against some people last year on Twitter saying that I didn't like what Tatis Jr. had done. I, I don't I, – I'm, I'm reversing course on this as well. It, it, you don't get a free pass. You went 3-0 as a pitcher. It's not it's not the hitter's problem. You now have to groove one. That's the, it is what it is. You know, you, you can't you can't you can't be upset that someone swung 3-0 because you're getting beat up, your team's getting crushed and then you went 3-0. You, know, you didn't want to be in that position, then don't go 3-0. You know, you had some control issues. This is where we're at. 
So I, I don't, I don't agree anymore with that, with that, the ver, the, you know, that dialogue and that, that thought process that you can't swing three zero anymore just because of the count. That it's stupid. It really is. And people pointed that out to me last year, and I am on board with those people now. That's not so much the problem here. Oddly enough. Most of the times in the pimp home runs or the or the swinging 3-0, it's the new school, new age versus the old school, and, and this is what it is. And and that's and you're talking about that specific thing. The problem here is not about new school, old school. It is not that Tony LaRusa believes that he is correct in how he handled the situation. He said it publicly that he um, he did not agree with what Mercedes did. He made a mistake, and he will have consequences within the family of the Chicago White Sox. The Minnesota Twins came out the next day. Tyler Duffy, a friend of mine, threw it threw it behind Mercedes. Um, I will tell you he was more than likely instructed. I haven't talked to Tyler. Um, and if I had, I won't tell you what he told me anyway. But uh, he threw behind Mercedes. I'm sure he was told to. He wouldn't do it on his own. Uh, and and then Tony Russo post came said he had no problem with the way the Twins handled it. I don't have any problem with Tony Larusa having those thoughts. It's it's nothing nothing bad. You know you just you brought up in a different era of baseball. There's no problem with that. I don't mind that you don't want guys swinging 3-0 when the game, when the bases are, or when it's, you know, you're getting crushed or whatever. I understand that. I understand you're not liking pimping home runs. It was a different brand of baseball back then. The game is evolving. The game is changing. And it's a new brand. I don't mind that he has those comments. The problem he's going to find himself in here is that he's losing, going to lose the clubhouse because he's saying these things publicly. If you say in, in, the, in the clubhouse and say, hey, listen. I'm the manager of this team. I don't want this team doing things like that. I understand there's a new school, there's a new way, and I'm opening to listen. I'm open to listening to you guys and, and and trying to figure out exactly, you know, maybe we can find a compromise, what have you. I don't know, but it, he if he says this to the team that hey, listen, if I was the manager of the Twins, I would have thrown at you too. That's how I've been brought up in this game. That's how I've played this game. That's how I've managed this game for 20 years. That is what I do. And if you want to set the precedent on that team, <clears throat> that there's some type of fine, whatever, if you do it, then you're the manager of that team. You can do that. But behind closed doors, you don't do that publicly. You now look like you don't have your players' backs. And, and you see guys all the time. You see, you know, I remember seeing Joe Girardi, you have guys get thrown at and him running out there. Every, all the managers run out there, even though they're part of the old school and they probably believe that they knew this was coming, that someone was going to get thrown at. And they, I mean, some people are going fuck off. Like, no, you're going to have your guys' backs. You don't want them to get thrown at. No matter if you believe they screwed up or not, you have their backs and then you go back in the dugout and say, hey, listen, I don't like that we're doing this. Let's make an adjustment. Now, when he comes out and says this in the manager, as a manager in the in the clubhouse, if he does it privately, you might have some veteran guys that say, hey, listen, no, I want to play this way. This is how I want to play. This is how I think we should be playing. But he is, in fact, the manager of the team. And there's only a few guys on that team that have the ability to do whatever they want without really any repercussions. Guys like Tim Anderson, uh, you know, those types of guys aren't going to get the same treatment. That's just the way major league, that's the way life works. But you have to do it privately. I don't think anyone in the baseball world is surprised that Tony LaRusa has these beliefs. No one. I, I can't imagine anyone being surprised by that. But you can't do it publicly. You can't come out into the media and say you would have that you don't disagree with the twins and how they handled it. That you that you you disagree with Mercedes and how he approached it. All of those things. You you can't do that. If he didn't listen to a sign, that's on Mercedes. That's the game of baseball. But you manage your club privately. You don't call them out in the media. At least not in my book. Is Mercedes, could Mercedes be a problem child behind closed doors? Could he be a cancer on this team? Could guys not like him? Could he have done this in the past and not listen to Larusa? Could he have done? Yeah, maybe. And maybe now there's a little bit more, you know, something behind this where he's he's overly frustrated with this particular player and he's over it. And maybe there are things that have happened that we don't know about. But from the outsider looking in, 
it was handled as poorly as it could be for a very savvy veteran manager, a guy who's been around the block forever. It, it's surprising to me that he would come out so publicly and, and so, so publicly not have your own players' backs. Now, will he lose the clubhouse over this? I mean, if he keeps talking the way he does, for sure. Um, I don't think he gets fired right now. They are in first place. Um, it really depends on what has been going on behind the scenes that we don't know about. Have there been incidents? Have Tim Anderson and, and guys that are veterans, not necessarily veterans on this team, but leaders of this team, have they already voiced concerns about Tony La Russa? You know, he already got DUI in the offseason. You know, has there been things that have led up to, okay, this has been the tipping point, the, the straw that brought the camels back, we're over it. See you later. Could be. It could, it could very well be. But this incident alone, I don't think, causes him to lose the clubhouse totally and um, gets him fired. I don't think so. Not in the first place team. But what he needs to do, and I'm sure, I sure hope he has, and if he doesn't, some leaders in the clubhouse need to do it, is they need to call a team meeting with managers. Typically speaking, in the big leagues and any type of any time I've ever played, uh, when a player calls a meeting, it's usually without coaches, coaches, managers, personnel, front office. No one else is involved besides the players, typically speaking. Now, in this scenario, you have to include, obviously, La Russa, so you include the other coaches. And what you want to do is you want to start a, an open dialogue, especially, specifically a guy like Tim Anderson. Because Tim Anderson is kind of a guy that has really bit, put himself at the front of this new age where he is going to pimp home runs in April. You know, he's going to he's going to do all these flashy things that are kind of bringing this base baseball into a little bit of a different world into that new world. And it, he would be a great guy to be able to lead this meeting and talk to LaRusso, talk to the other coaches and be, like, "Hey, listen. This is the brand of baseball we like to play." We don't believe, I understand that this is how you played the game back in, in the last 20 years of your of your coaching or managing. And some, I, don't, I don't know if Lewis have played in the big leagues, but we understand this is how you've done things. But this is how we want to do things. And if LaRusso La might not agree, he might say, hey, listen, I'm manager of this club right now. I respect what you guys are saying. I understand. Maybe I'll come around eventually. But as it stands right now, if we give you the take sign on a 3-0 count because we're up by 12, that's how I. That's the brand of baseball that I manage. You might not love it, but that's the brand of baseball that I manage. And there'll be nothing wrong with that. And again, there's nothing wrong with the belief system that he shouldn't swing 3-0. People like, people, some people like it. Some people don't. It seems like the new age wants people, wants more action, wants these things. Not a problem. I don't have any problem you swing 3-0. However... Every manager has his ability to play the way he wants to play. If it's not performing well, he can get you know, sh- you know, shown the door. If it's not the brand of baseball that the fans want and in that particular city, he can be shown the door. But he has the ability to choose. He is the manager. And at the end of the day, that's how it should be handled. In a, in a closed-door meeting with coaches, managers, and and the players, and it be talked out respectfully, not in the media. And the media is a great way to start causing, you know, you know, rifts between the teams and the players, the coaches and the players, you know, the front office and the players. You don't want that. You don't want these things to happen. Even so, even if you get a player that starts getting publicly, like Lance Lynn just started talking that he doesn't believe that this is correct. You start having now, okay, so maybe some players agree, some players don't agree. Now you have risk even inside the players, even inside the clubhouse on a player level. Nothing good can come of this in this type of situation. This needs to be mended immediately. If I am the owner of this team, I, I'm talking to Tony to tell him to have the meeting. I'm talking to Tim Anderson. You need to have a meeting. You need to talk this out. You need to get on the same page because right now this White Sox team is a talented group. They have the ability to go very deep in the playoffs this year, and they don't need this kind of bullshit distracting them and pushing them into a different direction. It's a bad brand for the. It's a bad brand of baseball. Um, it's not what you want uh, from your from your leader of the AL Central, from one of the most young and exciting teams we have in baseball right now. This needs to be fixed. It needs to be alleviated. It needs to be alleviated immediately uh, to get on the same page uh, to make sure that, that everyone, this group, he talked, you know, Tony Russo talked about a family. 
you know, it, 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 I don't think it's very family like to be speaking on this publicly and then to defend uh, how the opposing team handled it. I understand you don't have a problem with it. That's not. It's, that's okay. Everyone knew, knew that. The guy asking the question knew you didn't have a problem with it. But you don't answer it that way. You say, hey, listen, they did what they needed to do. We'll do what we need to do. And you move on. That's the way these things to be handled. I can't believe I'm giving advice to Tony La Russa right now. It feels like he should know these things. It feels like you know people should know these things going into this year, that Tony La Russa is an old school guy. I can't, imagine, I can't believe this is happening in, in, in so publicly and in front of everyone. But hey, this is the way they've chosen to handle it. They need to handle it now behind closed doors. Let this, you know, let this subside and go get logo let winning uh, take take a, take a part or, or take a let winning take the the headlines back for this team in Chicago because they're again they're a talented group of guys and they, they could do very they could do a very 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 good job here uh, this year and go very deep into the playoffs. So hope that that happens. Anyway, guys. I had a phenomenal weekend. I can't believe, by the way, just so you guys know, the absolute nightmare that it was trying to send um, episode, this is 89, so episode 88 to Miranda. I, I, I did it. I tried to send it on the plane, but the Wi-Fi in the plane just isn't strong enough to be able to send a video. So I had to wait till I got to Key West. I tr- then I tried to Key West, for, tried, you know, attempt number one. I thought it went through, never went through. Then... I tried to do it because I was at the I was at the bar at this point on Saturday, and I tried to send it to Miranda there, didn't work. So then finally I had to run back. I, w- I woke up. Um, I'm trying to think here. I did. I, I I think I sent it to her on on Monday, uh, and because it was just I couldn't. I, I Monday morning I think I sent it to her because I just couldn't get anything, and I ended up having me use the hotel lobby. A Wi-Fi, that one was the strongest one and the ability, the one that gave me the ability to send it. But service isn't great in Key West. Wi-Fi isn't great in Key West. And granted, yeah, it allows you to kind of break away. But still, for a guy who's running a podcast, he really would have enjoyed to be able to send that episode, especially because I didn't. it wasn't like I was late on the episode I recorded on Thursday. So that was kind of a shit show. But other than that, Key West was amazing. I hope you guys had a tremendous weekend. Um, I hope you've had a tremendous week now that this comes out Thursday. Uh, and let's hope this LaRusso thing get resolved because I don't like to see this type of stuff happening to one of the best teams in baseball. Uh, for you Red Sox fans out there, they are not playing a great brand of baseball right now. This is kind of the brand of baseball we kind of expected this year a little bit more. So let, I hope that this changes. But I will say the one caveat here is that Eddie Rodriguez is not having a good month in May. And, and we expect a better brand of baseball from him. So if he can go get a little bit back on the right track here, kickstart this team, get the hitting back. I think we'll be fine. I think we can kind of make a run for this. Uh, June June 12th, I think I'm in Boston. Um, that's, a, that's a maybe, but July 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, I am there in Boston. So anyone uh, around, I'm sure you'll see me at the bars. I'm sure you see at the games. That, that weekend is the Red Sox Yankees series. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, but guys, have a phenomenal weekend. Enjoy. Uh, have a few drinks for me, and I'll see you at the bar. Thank you so much for listening to the Sorry We're Closed podcast. Go subscribe to our email chain over at thepatlight.com and follow us on all social media. Until next time, guys, I'll see you at the bar. Sorry, we're closed.